happy Monday. Thanks for joining me here tonight. It is embroidery week and we are going to start stitching the embroidery of the month. So we have two of them here. They are two vintage sewing machines and I'll be sharing you guys. Uh, with, I'll show you guys my sewing machine here. This is kind of a portrait of the sewing machine we've been working on for a while here so I can show you that. I'm excited. Uh, for that and I also have my other vintage sewing machine. I will bring that down later this week to share with you guys So thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from penguin and fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter And I'm here every weeknight at 8 30 p.m. Central time and it's a time that we can relax and craft together uh, So thanks again you guys for joining me here. Like I said, we are starting the embroidery of the month so I do have the pattern uh, uploaded on the on the iPad here so this is what I'll uh, look at um, for the stitches and uh, the colors to use so I'll have that open near me uh, the PDF pattern like this comes uh, just alone as a pattern or with the bundle you'll still get the digital version and that's how I kind of like doing it I just have the digital version open on my phone or on the iPad and I just kind of look at that as I go uh, just just so I can do the colors and stuff so thanks again for joining me everyone let's get going on this today all right, here we go. Got all of the pieces here. Thank you all for joining me today. I see you popping on YouTube and Facebook right now. Hello, hello. So uh, it is embroidery week. So the third week of the month is when we start the embroidery of the month. Oh my gosh, that means we're in the third week of January already. Can that be true? That seems crazy town. Did I skip a week? That's just kind of what it seems like. Oh God. All right. Well, anyway, we are going to stitch these guys. I don't, I, you know, we might get through both of them. We'll just kind of see. I think I'm going to start with this guy tonight though. This is my Kenmore sewing machine. It is from 1938. <laughs> this is like a straight portrait of my, my sewing machine right here. And I'll show you guys. I know you don't, you don't get to see this in full very often. You just kind of see me sewing with it uh, up close. So tonight I'm going to show you the full thing. And then this is basically my uh, John's great-grandmother's basically a uh, Singer sewing machine. And that's in a case that we have uh, upstairs. So I might try and take it out of the case so, so I can show you guys this guy too. But this one is a Singer. Uh, my personal one is a Singer. This is more your traditional one that you're used to seeing probably. Um, this one is from 1927. I had to actually look it up today. Uh, singer is actually very good. So if you guys have a Singer sewing machine, like a vintage Singer sewing machine, no matter what it is. If you can find the, the I was going to say zip code, but if you can find the serial number, that's it. Uh, if you can find the serial number on the uh, sewing machine, sometimes it's on the bottom, sometimes it's on the back, you can just email Singer and they will, with, with your with the um with the number and they'll email you like personally back saying oh yeah it was made in a factory in new jersey new jersey on april 16th 1927 you know they really can tell you everything about it so if you do have a vintage singer i encourage you to just email them uh with yours to find out more about it but mine was from 1927 I'll have to look up the factory and stuff. I have it on a little note in the cabinet <laughs> where it lives. So I'll, I had to look at that today to remember that it was 1927. All right, I'm gonna zip down here quick and we're gonna get started here. But first I wanna show you my, uh, my Kenmore sewing machine here. All right, so this is it. <laughs> so I think it, it looks like it, right? So, um, <laughs> There are a lot of things that I like really, really like. Oh, you can kind of see my, my setup here. That's where I can see you guys chat and everything on the computer over here. But, uh, so here's the light. Uh, these come in a, a light that has a more style kind of like this, but those ones are actually from the 40s. So this one is a little bit earlier from 1938 with this light. But I just love 
these little details on it and the crinkle finish. So the crinkle finish is that matte black that almost looks like hammered, almost. I'm gonna get a little bit closer for you guys. So there we go. So this is the part that I really like is, um, there we go, like the, all these little details here. They're like super art deco-y looking, I think. And then this guy here. Forward on black, reverse on red. So here's the forward and this way's the back. So there is a reverse on here. It's super manual, but I just think that's so fun. And then I wanted to show you guys just the back because I did, I did make a little upgrade <laughs> this weekend to the back and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So on the back, I put new feet on it too so they don't slide as well. But so here's how it works. So I know I've, I've kind of talked about this a little bit. Uh, so it has the motor and instead of a belt, the motor is hooked up right to the uh, drive pulley, I think it's called. So this is just like a little rubber wheel and that wheel is what turns our larger wheel. There's no belt on this at all. It's, it's just a, the rubber wheel to our larger wheel. So this weekend, uh, these came in so I got these from Amazon. They're they're little. Uh, they're called graffiti band, uh, uh, silicone bands, uh, graffiti Joes or something, and uh, they're little silicone bands, and they stretch to be like twice the size. So I put a couple. I put two right next to each other on here, and what I'm hoping is that when we when we sew these. Uh, when I, when I oil this later and, you know, I don't know, some oil gets on here, you know, when we've been cleaning this, sometimes the wheel, this wheel will just spin and it won't grip onto the larger wheel. That's the biggest problem with this, this way of doing it versus a belt is sometimes this wheel will slide. So it'll just be spinning. Um, and this is just so smooth that it's not turning, but I'm hoping that these little silicone grippies uh, do the job. So next time we sew, uh, it will be with this. So I have not used this yet. Um, I, I put a little fabric piece. So if you have a, a, a drive pulley like this, a machine that goes right up against it, you don't always want this against the wheel because it'll dent the wheel and then it'll like kerchunk a little bit. So you can, this actually moves the motor. So I just stick a piece of fabric in there and then you have that gap. Uh, so there's no pressure on the wheel, but I'm really freaking stoked about these silicone bands. I put two on it. So uh, next time we uh, um, work on the machine, we will see how that works. <laughs> but yeah, so this has been treating me so well, this machine so far. So I just wanted to do a little show and tell uh, for you guys. If you have any questions about the machine, let me know. Uh, and uh, we can look at it and talk about it more. Oh yeah. Oh uh, no, a potted motor. Oh, I don't know what that is. Okay. I'm going to have to look at your guys' comments on Facebook talking about these motors a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I am uh, like in love with this machine. I got it from a, uh, they call it like the, the biggest, uh, yard sale for sewing stuff. Um, put on by the textile center here in Minneapolis. That's a nice thing. We have a textile center, which is so cool. Uh, and people donate a ton of, you know, just stuff, including sewing machines, vintage sewing machines. And I, I got this sewing machine there. All right. So here is our digital pattern. Um, you know, the colors you'll use, there's DMC equivalents on there. And, uh, here's the designs. So I think we'll start with this one today. I'm going to actually stitch this with two strands. There's a note up here. Stitch the, this design with two strands pulled from the six strand embroidery floss. We'll do that today. And then use one strand for like the actual sewing machine thread. And I, I just think that looks so cool. I'll show you guys what that looks like just with the teeny tiny one strand. Because this is a small design, but it's still, but it's got a lot of detail in it yet. That's why we're using two strands. Um, so it, it, uh, you know, so the lines weights a little bit thinner, so it doesn't like, 
so it's we're just altering the the thickness of the line so it'll be a thinner line versus if we used three or four strands it would be a fatter line but then this line we just did one big long stitch like you're actually threading the sewing machine oh this is threaded on the side that's kind of a fun feature of of this machine too let me show you guys that so this this part you don't actually get to see a whole lot here there we go so this is it's threaded all on the side like this the whole uh this is your tension over here it's just so different than what i'm used to that actually took a while for me to figure out how to thread uh, <laughs> it's just fun it's just so industrial looking i'm in love with it all right, but let's get stitching, you guys. So I did just press this really quickly here, and in the bundle, I'm gonna have this uh, nearby just so I can see it. But in the bundle, uh, it comes with pre-printed stick and stitch of both the designs. So remember that stick and stitch is uh, that neat material from Sulky, where you can print right on it, and then it wash. You stitch right through it, and then it washes away later but it it sticks on like a sticker so i'm gonna pull it this is just a backing paper and i'm just gonna stick that kind of right in the middle of my fabric here it sticks on really well it's removable you can you can take it off and move it if you don't get it just right the first time this works so well if you're um stitching on you know like a black piece of fabric or a pattern piece of fabric um that works swell all right, I need to grab a hoop. Uh, the bundle also comes with one hoop and the needles and everything. So, all right, let's get this in the hoop. We'll get going. Oh, Amy says I was using my 1938 featherweight this weekend. So, um, the featherweight. So, so my my that's a Singer a Singer sewing machine. So, a Singer featherweight. And I suspect it's called the featherweight because it is a very small machine that you can move around and uh, I'm guessing is much lighter. <laughs> so, uh, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, because I've, I've, um, oh, your kit is in black and white. Okay, Valeria, did you get a, the PDF of the pattern? Let me know. I'll, I'll check into that afterwards here it should be a um this is all that comes with the with the bundle you don't actually get the color printed pattern uh that's actually the digital download so you will have to check on your phone it's it's in the receipt there'll be a download now button oh amy says that the featherweight is nine pounds uh so the featherweight is like the smallest version of this so i, I believe this is the biggest version so this is a they call it a 66 and then I believe it's the 99 is in the middle, is like a, a, in, in the middle size, and then the featherweight is the small size. Um, so what, like a, like a third of this size or something? Uh, I don't quite know how all that works. Okay, Valeria, I will look into that afterwards. Uh, send me a an email to info at penguin and fish um, or you can direct message me in, um, in Facebook there. All right, we got our colors here. Um, this one has like a little orophil uh, spool on the top there with the, that's why I have the orange. I think I'm gonna just start with the black right away. So that's that's most of most of it here is the black outline just like my machine and then we got some silver for the light and the wheel. And then all the little gold details and some gold thread there. So, all right, let's start with the black. Okay, so the full full three quarters and half. So, um, the the featherweight is half the size of my sixty six. So, is that 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 sounds right, right? All right, so I'm I'm gonna stitch with the two strands of floss, meaning I'm going to. Um, do that fold in half technique so i'm actually going to get my like 24 inches or so but then i'm going to fold it in half so i actually have about 48 inches here uh, and then i'm gonna then i'm gonna snip so we might probably we probably only need this
piece. We probably won't even need the rest of this because there's six strands in here. Uh, let's pull one. So this is that new technique that we've been using uh, with the two strands where we don't have to weave in the ends. We just kind of secure it on the back in a fun way. Oh, you guys, look, I got a couple, I got a couple new uh, needle minders. <laughs> so we could use one of these new needle minders today. This is kind of a small design, but it'd be kind of fun to do it still. So I got this cute little cloud, thought we could use, use him today. The magnets are so strong though that they kind of, I feel like I'm going to hurt myself with them. So here's, here's one of the new, so I'm, I'm starting to build a collection now. <laughs> Uh, so I have that one and, uh, you know, I didn't have any, but now I have like four different ones. And then here's, here's the other one that I got, uh, with the little cardinals on this. This one is so strong though, that <laughs> I'm kind of afraid to even take the, the magnet off. I, <laughs> it's so strong. Like, I don't know, this would be great if I was working on a quilt or something. Um, cause this would definitely, like, I'm going to injure myself. Ah! <laughs> It would definitely hold a thick quilt. So if you're doing a binding or something, I think that's kind of what I'm saving this one for with this mega magnet on the back. It's it's like absurd how strong that magnet is. But I thought it was pretty cute. We'll use a little cloud feller today. And the other one is from Marie. The adorable little flower. I love this guy too. <laughs> These are some more manageable... <laughs> <laughs> magnets. I don't feel like I'm gonna uh, pinch my finger off with these. So these are just right, but a little bit big for this design. So we'll use the itty bitty guy here. Okay. So I am gonna double up my thread so that uh, the two ends are right here and we're gonna thread it from this side leaving the loop, the fold on the other side. So that's how we're starting this. This is that fun technique of, of starting. So, all right, let's see, what's a good path to take here? I always kind of like figuring out the path that I want to do. Hmm, I'm kind of thinking, well, you know what? I was thinking, why don't we do all the inside parts first and then do the outside last, but now I'm thinking there's kind of a big gap from here to here. I could start here and kind of work my way around. Maybe come back this way and I don't know. I think that's a decent path. I'm going to start here and see where it takes me. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, so that's right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start my back stitch. This is a back stitch, I believe. Yes. Just looking at the design again, the line art, the pattern. So I am, I'm not pulling it all the way through, just a little bit. And I'm going to start my stitch like so. And I'm going to just pull on this until it's, the loop is real close to the end there. And then I'm going to just thread my needle through that loop. And then I'll pull the rest of the way and that loop that loop is now holding down my floss. This is it. There is no loose ends. There is no knots. It's kind of amazing. So, all right. Love, love it. And now we can just start. So I'm going to just backstitch around here. You can tell uh, how thin this line is compared to my normal patterns. Usually we got quite a bit thicker uh, thicker outline to things. And that's because we're just using the two strands instead of the three that I, that I typically do. Oh, I'm so excited to be stitching this. I think, uh, I think in my head, this is going to go pretty quick, except for that. There is kind of a lot of detail and stuff. So that might actually take a little bit of time, but we'll see. This guy's going to hang, uh, right behind me, I think. Or maybe I should hang it in my, um, maybe I should hang it somewhere else. I should hang it like by my computer <laughs> and then it'll be like a reminder to be like, Hey, maybe you should get off the computer and sew instead. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to do some big back stitches up this path here. Ugh, this is exciting. I'm, I'm happy to be stitching this tonight. Oh, and I might put the date on here too. I think that was fun. Um, who was doing that in the group? I, for, I like forget already. Um, they wrote the, uh, was it Lynn? I can't remember. They wrote the, um, the date on here, the date of the of the sewing machine and I thought that was just so sweet and cute that I, I might do that too. So we'll stitch this guy up and I might write put a 1938 in the middle there. All right, I think there's this little tick mark up here. Let me just see what that color is. All right, so it, so it's gray. It's gray up there, so I won't go all the way up. I will just go to here. Oh, Lynn. Okay, so it was Lynn. Um, Lynn did the dates on it. That was just so cute, and uh, you wrote it just so nicely on there. Um, so Lynn wrote the date of, you know, when the sewing machine was birthed, I guess, <laughs> uh, right in the middle there on both, and I just think that looked just so cute. So I'm gonna have to do that too, I think. All right, do I keep going over here? Yeah, I'm gonna stick, um, we're gonna keep doing the outline and then I'll figure out how to do the middle parts next. It's hard to know which, what path to take here. Olin says I'm all about the history. Yeah, I'm gonna, like I said, for the singer, I had to, um, the singer, I could just email them and find out all about the machine, which was pretty dang cool. It was not as easy to find info about the um, Kenmore. This one, in particularly this one, was difficult. Uh, but yeah, this one was from 1938. Uh, the other one, the singer, I wrote down like the factory location and the date the actual date, I think it was like April 16th or something, but I'll, I'll look, I'll, um, bring that paper down. I keep it with the machine, <laughs> uh, just cause I, I seem to forget all the time. Uh, so I'll, I'll grab that and we can peek at that tomorrow. But man, I thought it was just so cool that they, they sent me back like the actual manufacturing date and the factory. I just, that was just neat. It's a, it's a neat service that they do that. Um, singer. While I'm at this little point, let's just go down like that. I should have done that over here. Oh, well. I think, actually, I think the, the singer version of this is going to go faster. Less angles <laughs> to it. It's just nice and curvy. Maybe I'll happen upon a feather a featherweight at, at some point. Uh, those are really popular. It's, it's fascinating when you start digging into like Facebook Marketplace and, and stuff to, to find these old machines. Um, you definitely see quick the people who know what they're charging for and what they're not. So you find the value of, of machines pretty quick. So these one are not these ones, but these, uh, these singer ones, the 66s, those go for nothing. Like people are just trying to get rid of them. They're, they're big and heavy and, you know, so people that don't want a sewing machine, you know, they're usually trying to get rid of one and, and you can find those, um, you know, I don't know, for $50 or less, let's call it. Uh, but, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Valeria has, Valeria says I have 10 featherweights. Dang, that's amazing. Yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm always kind of keeping my eye out for one of those. So that's what I'm saying. So, so these guys, the 66s, um, those are 
out and about and you can find them. But the featherweights, now those ones are, those are the real collector ones that people are looking for. Um, well, I mean, I guess I don't know tons about collection collector stuff, so I'm sure there's others, but like, I know that those ones people look, so those can go anywhere from like, the cheapest I've seen them is like $500, and it, it, it would be a steal if you found one um, for that. Um, but then they go, like, if you're getting one that's restored and stuff or ready for you and clean, they can go, you know, they can be like $1,600. I mean, it's, they're, they're the ones that people are looking for. Uh, a lot of times <laughs> I hear people like, oh, my, my, uh, friend at work's aunt was getting rid of this and I knew you sewed, so do you want it? <laughs> so i that's kind of how I hear people, um, uh, people acquiring a featherweights. Oh, Nolene has three. Fun. Oh, Valeria's, uh, ten featherweights are the ten, ten grandkids. Ugh. So one day, I just want, like, a wall that is all, I know I've talked about this before, but I want a wall that's just all displaying these vintage sewing machines, and I just want to save all of them. But I've been, I, you know, just because I know that they're just so cool, these little featherweight ones, I've never actually seen one in person, so I can't even quite imagine the size of them. Like, I know the size of, of this one, and that it's really, like, what was it, three, no, half size of this one just seems like it would be, like, this big. <laughs> so I, that's kind of, I kind of can't even quite comprehend that. All right, I'm about done here. I probably shouldn't try and get any more stitches here. Let's let's weave in this end and start a start a new one. Um, but I would, uh, you know, if I found one and it, they didn't know the value of it and were selling it for cheap or acquired one somehow, well, that'd be pretty cool. Oh yeah, so. That's what, that's exactly it. So Valeria says the cheapest one was like, like $2,500. Yeah, these, these things are like super duper collectible. And if you, if you find them and if you got it for cheap or for free somehow, I mean, count yourself super freaking lucky. Cause that's not, you know, a real thing all the time. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, I, every once in a while when I, you know, take two seconds and, you know, putts around. Uh, I'll go on a Facebook marketplace and see if there's any on there, but I've never, uh, I, I have found them online on there before, but never near me and always starting at like $600, which, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to go drive somewhere for that. Uh, I don't want one that much yet, <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with these little guys that I got now, but it is, it is in the back of my head that like, ooh, it'd be kind of fun to have one of those. Oh, fun! Sally's got, uh, two, um, you got the Tula Pink, um, Bernina, that's nice. My mom has a Bernina. But that, gosh, that's got to be, man, that's got to be at least a 15-year-old Bernina by now, too. And to, to me, it's fan all super fancy. <laughs> you know, like it has the needle down function, all that stuff. I don't, my uh, uh, machines don't have any of that. Okay, I kind of put myself in a pickle here, I'm realizing now, because... I've left, like, these stitches to do yet, but no way to, like, get out of this area. Like, I, you know, I'm mapping this out in my head, right? I suppose I could start here, get these, come down here, and then we can probably jump down to here because my stitches will be um, hidden behind here. So then we could kind of, I could kind of cross over here and then start this base. Why don't we do that? All right, so I'm going to start kind of where we left off. Uh, but I'm going to start in the same way. I'm going to do that neat little loop-de-loop -loop way of doing this with the two threads 
or with the one thread that we fold in half. So there's there's where we folded it. Let's throw the needle through that loop again. There we are. I'll start it up again. Nice and clean on the back. Oh dang, Valeria said I've seen ladies that luck out and find one at an old shop for 100. Yeah, see that's that's always the like hope is you'll walk into like a thrift store and they won't know what they actually have. Um, or you'll walk into like an estate sale or, or someone's yard sale or something and you know they just won't know what they have. But nowadays people are looking that stuff up on eBay to price it out and they're realizing oh this thing is like worth you know $600 we could price this at. So I think people are onto it now so I, I feel like it's harder to to find them and actually they'll put that price on like these ones not knowing that these are the ones that you know don't have that demand <laughs> and don't go for that much so but yeah like like I said though like that 600 whatever dollars is the cheapest I've ever seen one and that's just for an old used one that you might not get I mean they're all used but one that's not kept up and you don't know if it works or anything like that um, but yeah, the nice ones, those, those are up there, but ugh, they're cute. I would love to actually have one and use as a travel sewing machine. Like that would be just, that would be neat to actually use it, um, you know, visit people and just be able to bring it along. Yeah, if it's really nine pounds, man, that's, that's a whole lot less than, than mine. I mean, you know, there are anchors for sure. Although these older ones, like from the 20s and 30s, are not nearly as heavy as, as like, the Kenmore that I have from the 60s. Ugh, that one is so heavy. down this path and I am going to kind of jump down to the beginning here. So I'm hoping we can kind of get most of this black done tonight. You know, I think we might actually get both of these done, both designs done. That'd be pretty cool. Well, actually, we'll see. Because I do want to take the stick and stitch off as well, but that doesn't really take all that long. So even if we don't get done on Thursday, we could still stitch a little bit on Friday and still be able to take the stick and stitch off. All right, planning ahead, planning. I'm kind of estimating my time here. All right, so I finished that little area. I am gonna jump down to like right here. I'm gonna do the threading last. So like the, the thread, you know, like the pretend thread that's coming out of the pretend <laughs> spool here. I'm going to do that last so it looks like um, I'm actually threading the machine. Now I do have, just as a reminder, I do have the pattern open on the um, iPad here so I can just see what colors go where yet. So this is all silver or the gray. That's all gray, all these parts in here. Oh, Mary says that I was recently gifted my great grandmother's 1920s singer. Ugh, so cool! It's super heavy. Yep. Um, yeah, I think um, I think this guy is actually quite a bit lighter than than this, and neither of them are light. Um, but yeah, they're no joke. It, it, it's still fascinating to me that these guys hinge into those cabinets, right? So, you know when you see a sewing machine like flip out of the cabinet? They're just on like these two like reinforced hinges. That is some engineering because <laughs> those two hinges are holding up like this 40 pound machine or something. It's, it's crazy town. I was always kind of scared of them actually, but now I'm just kind of fascinated with those, those hinges. All right, how do we do this now? I think I'm gonna go this high path here and then we'll come back because I'm 
getting low on thread again, we'll come back and do that lower path next. Kind of going, took a weird route with uh, this path. I, I was kind of like figuring out what direction uh, to go, like mapping out. Doesn't always kind of pan out quite right. I like this little cloud guy. He works he works for our itty bitty embroideries. Ooh, uh, Sally says I have a friend that has an old mint green small machine. Oh my god, that would be the best. Ugh. So fun. <laughs> Sylvia says I taught in preschool for a bit. It's always a planning ahead game. <laughs> Oh god, I bet. Alright, I'm hoping that this thread gets me all the way to here, and then I can start here, go the lower road, and then come up and somehow get the rest of this. I'm pretty excited about that motor pulley. Uh, that that little oh I guess this is the front of the machine but this is actually the bobbin um, wheel so there's a wheel on the front like there is on the back uh, and th that's to wind the bobbin but I'm I'm the motor pulley which you can't see on on this that's that small rubber wheel attached to the motor uh, I'm excited for those silicone bands I'll um if any of you guys are interested in there I'll post a link to those bands I just got them from Amazon but those little little silicone bands. I think they're going to work perfectly for this motor pulley. So if you have um, a machine with that and wanted to give them a try, I'll, I'll link it uh, when we're done. Pretty excited. I guess not excited enough that I <laughs> took the time to try it out, but oh, I did clean my area. That, that, that was uh, big because, man, it, you know, we were working on the Splendid Sampler too last week, and it was foundation paper piecing, and dang, that is a messy, messy process. So, um, that was that was a win. <laughs> I didn't I didn't sew anything. I just cleaned up. All right, this worked out perfectly. So here's my last stitch, and I have enough. That was kind of a big stitch, but it's just because I'm running low, so I didn't want to risk it. I'm a little close to the um, hoop, so it's hard to weave in the end, but I am going to weave in this end. Then we will start it back up. Um, so we're on our third piece of that thread, so it's actually using more than I thought we were going to. Stay on that back one. So this little, this little um, cloud uh, needle miner can be for my itty bitty embroideries like this. Actually, I'm gonna scooch it up to the top now because I'm working. I'm kind of I want it to live where I'm not working basically. So let's get the little magnet on there. <laughs> little cloud floating above. That's nice. All right, I'm still, this is that same like 48 uh, inch piece. I'm totally estimating. Um, it was about two feet folded in half, probably a little less than that. All right, so let's fold it in half again. I think we're cruising through this black. Oh, I didn't even use the needle minder there. Oh well. Still trying to make that a habit to use the needle minders. All right, here's our fold in half loop. So now here is where I think I'm gonna go back over here, get the bottom edge of this, and then keep going up top and not quite sure what direction I'll go in at that point. Probably just straight up, I'll get this little wheel, get some of these little bits, and then come back down and then start this way if I have enough thread at that point. I suspect I'll need one more. Alright, so I'm going to start that loop method way again. I'm just starting my stitch. And... Ooh, that's 
grab that loop. I love that method. So that was, so doing this um this design with two strands was another excuse to to do that loop method way of doing this too. <laughs> Thought why not? That's fun. I like I like starting embroidered floss that way. So I don't know, we may be doing more two strand stuff <laughs> in the future just cuz I'm kind of digging it now just cuz I can do that loop method of starting. But on, lar on other pieces, I still do like my three strands. And we can even do more strands at some point too. It's all just a decision on how thick you want your line, line weight to be. And like I said, these are pretty detailed for how small the embroideries are. So um, a, little, uh, a little more delicate line, thinner line. Thought that was the way to go for this one. I want to get the black done too because we got some of these cute brighter colors to to use and obviously feel free to use whatever colors you want um i've kind of limited this palette to the four but like if you wanted the heart to be a different color or something go for it it's getting a little loose so i'm just pulling the fabric tight again so fun this machine but yeah so we actually um the when we bought this machine first of all i think it was like i th oh i'll i'll tell the story first but i i we got it at that big giant warehouse um sale that the that the textile center here puts on uh, you can probably just google minneapolis textile center sewing sale and, and something about it will come up but they they rent a whole giant warehouse or they don't rent it they just i don't know use a giant warehouse from a partner or something and uh, just oodles of people will go i mean post covid or during covid i don't know i don't know what they did for it this year but um this past year but prior you'd go there and uh, you know well first of all like uh, two weeks beforehand if you had any supplies that you wanted to donate like some like yarn or old fabric or you know old patterns that you have or anything so it's great like if you're moving or you know if if you were trying to empty a house out or something uh you could just donate it all so you donate whatever and uh oh i did <laughs> gretchen says i think you videotaped shopping there i did <laughs> so that was when i got this machine um uh, you're right oh i should find that video I wonder if I can find that again. But yeah, so um, so people donate stuff the couple weeks before, right? And then they have a huge sale. And, I, you know, it's basically a fundraiser or something probably, right? Um, so then they, they sell it all, right? So they have a, a special area in the middle um, where they have, like, the vintage machines and all that. And we actually saw this box like a sewing machine carrier right like the little boxes with the handles and that's actually what we wanted because <laughs> we're like oh my god look at this box someone had painted this box or not even painted it they like laminated it with that old i don't know sticky like kitchen laminate stuff <laughs> in the olden days that's when we when we were there yep colleen uh but it had, um, it was gray, and someone had hand-lettered um, a person's name on there and the high school graduation date. So uh, it, it said, like, Barbara Brott, and then the graduation date. And we're, like, graphic designers, so, like, just that so someone hand-lettered this was, like, so cool. And we're like, you know, we can always use a box for stuff. So we actually just wanted the box. Uh and then we opened it up, and this was the machine that was in it. And we're like, oh my god, that machine is so cool looking. I've never seen such a weird, angular machine like this uh, before. So, I, like, I didn't even know they existed. 
Um, so we're like, oh my God, we have to get that one. <laughs> uh, like we needed it, but uh, it was just so cool looking, but we didn't, we wanted to get a cabinet for it, but I didn't want a crazy big cabinet. I wanted something that looked like dainty or like it had legs that you could put a chair underneath and stuff. It wasn't like a whole enclosed one that looked like a big piece of furniture. I wanted it to look like a smaller piece of furniture, basically. So they had one there, but it wasn't for this machine. It was for a different machine. But then we asked them, like we talked to the people there. They had people who knew what they were doing, um, just, you know, volunteers, but, you know, so were volunteers. And uh, um, we were trying to figure out, could this machine fit into that other cabinet? And we figured out it could, but they wouldn't sell me the cabinet without the machine in there. <laughs> so I think the, and the machine ended up being my 60s uh, Kenmore sewing machine, which I haven't really done much with. Um, it'd be funny. That's the one with the cams on the top that determine like the stitch, those little round cams, which I didn't know existed either. Um, but anyway, so that's where I got that machine. They wouldn't let me buy the cabinet without buying the machine. So I think the machine was like $5 and the cabinet was like 15 <laughs> And then I think this machine was like 50 bucks or something. So we ended up walking out there with two sewing machines and a cabinet. It was just horrible. Ah, we were naughty. Um, but I love it so much. And now the cabinet... Um, the cab I mean, this can screw into the cabinet, so we can put this machine in the cabinet, but I've been using it, so, I mean, when I'm done using it, I'll put it back in there. But right now, it, it's um, it's got our big jade plant sitting on it by the window, and it just looks really nice and, and not huge and not big and bulky in, in uh, the window. So, that is where I got it. I love it so much. <laughs> but it's from that crazy big giant yard sale. Um, yep, Sally, I went to school for graphic design back in the day, but I definitely like just drawing and, and doing that sort of stuff. But yeah, started out in graphic design land. Which I kinda hate now. I don't I don't necessarily hate, but uh, I kinda just find it exhausting, I guess. It's such a detailed it's such a detailed thing to be in and it, I I don't know like with the other stuff that I do I have to think like bigger picture than that so I, I I find myself getting annoyed when I have to like dig in to a design super detailed and I, I don't mean like these drawings I, I love doing these drawings but like um you know like if you had to design you know a poster or something or a little booklet or, or something like that that's the sort of stuff that I'm like oh my god I, I can't I can't I don't know I'm not down with it anymore <laughs> But I actually I originally did that as a design as a major because I thought design is basically the study of how things like objects interact with each other like visually and I thought well I, I liked animation and I like that sort of stuff too and other you know illustration I I liked all of that but in my head design was where I could learn the most on how things react with each other so I could, you know, use those skills for everything else is kind of what I figured. So that's, that's, that's why graphic design, I suppose. Ooh, I'm almost out of thread, but I want to get a couple of these little itty bitty baby stitches. Oh, Lynn says this is the first time using the stick and stitch. It'll take some getting used to going much slower, but I think I'll like it. Yeah. I mean, if you can stitch directly onto the fabric, I do think that's the best still. But this allows um, the idea of just like skipping the design process or skipping the um, tracing process to some extent because you can just print it out. Um, 
but it is nice. It does add a little stability to the fabric, uh, which is helpful. But yeah, it'll take a little getting used to. And I find myself liking the stabbing method more using the stick and stitch. Uh, that's where you can go just straight up and down versus like the sewing method where you come in sideways a little bit, um, if that makes sense. So I do the, st the stabbing method, I think works a little bit better. Weaving in the ends. We're actually coming up with a way, and, and we'll have these soon, but we're coming up with a way that these will, that we can pre-print these on the fabric, um, hopefully pretty easily. So soon, I'm hoping that these will be pre-printed for you guys without the stick and stitch, and it'll just be right on the fabric right away. So that uh, hopefully is coming up soon. We're kind of working on that. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, we still got all this stuff on the inside of the black. So we have, oh, we're halfway through this um, three strands of black. So I'll save this for the other sewing machine embroidery. I don't think we'll need any more on this one. Yep, I think the last is just this kind of outline stuff here. Oh, and we got that, that stretch there. And that is it for the black. Good, 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 good. Uh, Amy's asking any recommendations for stitching on t-shirts. So I definitely want to do a video on this. I'm going to need to research uh, it a little bit more, but a stabilizer is going to be probably the thing you want the most. Um, I'm trying to come up with some ways that you don't need to buy some special stabilizer that you could just um, do it with what you got at home. Uh, but some sort of stabilizer. Uh, T-shirts are tricky because of a couple reasons. Um, and these are the things that, you know, or why you need stabilizer and that sort of thing. First of all, they're very stretchy, right? Well, there's actually three things. How do you transfer it as the design? Transferring the design is difficult. You can't just trace through it and you can't really use carbon paper well or anything either because it's squishy, right? Um, that knit fabric for a t-shirt is, is squishy. So there's some transferring challenges. Uh, so, you know, a stick and stitch like this is a good idea potentially because you can print the, des the design or trace the design right to this and then stick it on. Um, the next thing is that it's, well, that'll help take care of the stretch a little bit, but the, the other thing is that it's actually kind of difficult to stitch through as well. So that's, that's another re reason why, why a stabilizer is good. Um, I'll have to look into stabilizers a little bit more. I don't have a great recommendation for that yet, uh, but you might want a tearaway one, uh, something that you is strong enough that you can iron or stick on, but that you can tear away or or you know wash away. I think I think something like this stick and stitch might work well. Yeah, that could be. Amy is saying, um, I don't know for sure, but maybe a blunt needle rather than a sharp needle. SF 101 is a cotton iron. I have not done this, but I would try. Yeah, I mean, you're going to want something that when you're done, you can either take off or that will soften. That's why you see a lot of times on embroidered, like machine embroidered shirts, they have that that um, paper on the back still. That's the stabilizer, and they just don't take that off. It, it in theory just softens over time. Um, I'm, I'll have to dig into this, but I definitely want to do a video on this, um, how to do this, stitch on t-shirts and sweatshirts and that sort of thing. I know a lot of people do that right away to learn because you know because it's you know especially now it's pretty trendy like oh it'd be great to have like a cute 
sweatshirt with um, some embroidery on, right? I think I'm in a pickle again here. I think I'm going to go down this route. We'll go down this way. Uh, but I don't want you, like, if you haven't embroidered, like, if one has not embroidered before, I wouldn't recommend doing it right on a sweatshirt at first. Just because it is kind of difficult, and I don't want you to feel, like, I wouldn't want one to feel that, oh, I can't do this, and this is so difficult. Uh, it is difficult with a sweatshirt or, or, or a t-shirt. It's not going to be as precise, really, but it can be done for sure. Um, I've stitched on onesies before. But at the same time, maybe if that's what a person wants to start out with, and they finish it, and they're happy with it, then it's maybe more of a win than stitching onto something that they didn't care about, so. But yeah, I do want to do a um, tutorial, uh, a video on how to stitch on both of those, so we'll, we'll give that a try. All right, I'm going to just kind of zip through the backs of these. I need to jump back to where I was. Oh gosh, am I going to have enough? Oh, I might have just enough. Yay, perfect! I think this is all we got left is this little kind of wrap around here. So Catherine says, I use coffee filters on the back when I applique with a blanket stitch on the machine. It tears away easily, but embroidery is a much larger stitch. Yeah, so what I'm what I'm thinking is I wonder if there's a way to like get like a paper backing and then get it in the hoop right away or baste, do some basting stitches, like a lot of basting stitches and then get it in. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way where you don't need to buy all that space specialty um, stabilizer because that can get so confusing and it I, I find it completely overwhelming like if you go to a jo Joann's and see that aisle of all that stuff um, but I'd like to we'll do a video of both ways like if you don't have any of that stuff what can you use at home and um, if you want the a stabilizer that does it well we'll do a video on that too I'm going to do a whole pile more of those this year. All right, two more stitches. We're almost there. Oh, it took exactly the hour here to do to do this plug. I guess we did some show and tell too, so we putzed around a little bit at the beginning. But that's it for the black. I'm just double checking. I think that's it. I'm going to weave in this end. And I think that is a great stopping spot for the day too. Um, gosh, I hope we can crank through most of the rest of it tomorrow. Dang, that would be awesome if we could do that. Might not be the all of the rest of it, but if it was pretty much a good part of the rest of it, then, you know, I'm definitely seeing us being able to finish both of these designs uh, this week. Oops, let's get it there. All right, get this guy in the front. <laughs> All right, so there we are. We got his uh, black outline done. I'm excited for the next part. So we're gonna add his little gold uh, plating and all that in here and uh, the silver. Um, we'll probably do the silver stuff first because I think I can weave in the ends pretty easily. Yeah, I think we'll do the silver. So that's that's this guy, this little um, his little dial there and the wheel. Oh, and all this stuff up here is the, the gray. And then we'll get the little top and bottom of the, uh, the thread, which is that orange. And then I think we'll do all the gold and then we can do the little threading. <laughs> and then we still have the heart to do as well. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking order wise, I'll probably do the gray next. Well, maybe I'll do the gold after that. Get some gold in here right away. All right, well, anyway, there we are. Again, here is here is uh, the first guy that we're doing and uh, the second one. This is our, our sample. This is what uh, Jenna stitched these up. But what I think is so fun about these is she stitched them actually like how they're, they're threaded in real life. So, <laughs> you know, this one goes around that wheel and then back up or the tension wheel and down through, whereas this one is at the side. It goes through uh, that lever there and goes down, back up through there, then through all the tension stuff and down. It's kind of 
I mean, it goes through the tension stuff through the first time and then up and down. It's just kind of a mass of thread, which is exactly what it looks like in real life. So I, I, I'm excited for that part. We'll actually be kind of threading, threading these machines. But I think that was great progress uh, to start out um, to start out today. All right. So thank you guys again for joining me for this. Uh, yeah, we got we got a ways. <laughs> a little cloud up there is cute. I'm excited to get the color going tomorrow. Uh, so feel free to join us still. We'll be working on this all week. Uh, and then uh, then we'll be moving on to a free week next week. Ooh, we'll have to figure out what we want to do for our first free week of the year. Uh, but yeah, we, we, got, we got a couple days yet, though. So we'll just be stitching here all week and just having like that nice chill end of the day here. Uh, the pattern and the bundle, they're available still, and we'll get them out this week uh, for, for any of them ordered. Um, and uh, you should have them soon. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at info at uh, Penguin and Fish, and uh, we'll get back to you with any uh, issues that you might have. So thanks again, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.